back here to take my announcement. We are going to eat by tables because, as you know, it's short on room in here. So what we're going to do first is the head table up here. If y'all didn't know that was the head table, that is the head table. And they're going to just file right out and line up over there. But first things first, we're going to ask Mr. Willis to have the invitation. If you please. Our kind Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to thee for the many blessings you've given to us. We thank thee for this occasion where we can gather together with friends as we can renew acquaintances and just fellowship time together. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for each one who is present here tonight and for each one who is represented. Kind Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the safety that each has had as they've traveled here. We pray to Heavenly Father that they will have a safe journey back to their home. We ask you now, dear Heavenly Father, that you protect this food, that you bless it with the nursing of our bodies, use it for our service. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Now, okay, now after the head table, we'll start down Ronnie at your table. Okay, okay.
but uh, we really have anticipated this event tonight. We'd like to go back in the past a little bit with you. As you know, uh, we spent many a night at the uh, Old Rose Inn on the Sock Hopping Tour. Now, when I say a tour, really it was a dance down there, but I don't remember too many dancing. What we did, we would go in and see who the girls were there, and if the girls weren't there that we were looking for, we'd go back out and run up down Main Street a while, and then we'd come back in and see if the girls were there. Now, I don't remember doing all that much dancing up there or even sock hopping. And uh, some folks probably don't know, well, everybody here don't know what a sock hop is. But what I'm getting around to is to tell you the Rose Inn isn't there anymore. But if you want a picture of it, we have them down at the chamber for $10 a piece. <laughs> I promised them I'd do that. <laughs> oh, and another thing that's disappeared, and just disappeared this year, but it was a famous place for us. And I remember going down there when I was a sophomore, and I was real impressed because some of the senior football players invited me along. And we all went out there, and they had girlfriends with them. Now, that was before I knew anything about girlfriends, and I didn't know too much about what to do with them, you know, and so I didn't have a girlfriend. But they were all cheerleaders. I thought that was really impressive. And we went to the light. Does everybody know about the light? Well, we went out there, and these brave football players were all leading us down the track. And they were dragging the girlfriends behind them, and of course, I was way behind them. I didn't have a girlfriend even to drag. But anyway, the light did appear that night. And they turned around and did a full back rush over the cheerleaders and back to their car, dragging those poor cheerleaders down the track. Well, I'm here to tell you the track's not even there anymore. And uh, so I'm assuming that the light has moved. And I got from a good source that over there on a real foggy night out from Montrose, they saw this lantern going through one of those flat cars that's got all the track piled on it, and they were looking, they assumed that he was looking for his head over there. Because <laughs> they moved the track over there. You really have to explain that, do you? <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute when I thought it up, but uh, anyway, everybody knows the story about the light. Okay, it's gone, it's gone. We, we lost it. Hoop skirts are gone. Does anybody know what a hoop? Did we really call them hoop skirts? Yes. Did we really? Is that, somebody said crinoline. Crinoline? Is that what it was? Ann, my expert, she, she just, I can't ever say anything right. Now, the whole time we've been planning this, I hadn't done anything right. Ann said, that's not right, they're crinoline. Something, I can't even say crinoline. But anyway, they're gone, but we found a dummy out here to wear them. Now don't tell her, I think that's one. Uh, Raymond was going to dance with her. <laughs> he had promised her since he brought her here to dance with her. <laughs> of course, now he had to dress her. <laughs> and he told me that was a new experience trying to dress with those dummies. And uh, of course, he drove out here with her. She didn't have any clothes on when she was sitting in front of his new truck. <laughs> I said, that would be an experience. That's probably going to be in the news observer next year. <laughs> oh, pink and black. Y'all remember pink and black? Oh, I wish I didn't, I tell you. Really, it just kind of, you know, pink you and black just really kid. didn't do what? You left real kid. <laughs> Boy, Phyllis, you knew I needed that. <laughs> Thank you. And also, we had Ivy League, you know, with the belt buckle in the back and the button-down collars. See, we got, you got the button-down collars back, so we got those. And poor old Elvis is gone. Although we do have some remember, 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 of him tonight. It's how I mail Tillis. But anyway, we got a little bell from Presley tonight, but he's gone too. Oh, I want to tell you that I, I stood around at the picnic and kind of listened a little bit, and I heard this conversation over there. And they said, I won't tell you who it was, man. It says, I don't believe you knew who I was when we met in the park today, did you? And the other person said, no, who were you? <laughs> we got the damnedest smart-ass class I ever saw. I mean, you really. 
real. I hate to say that word, but it's the truth. They a bunch of smart aleks in this place. Oh, you remember the science club? Gerald, you remember shooting that rocket up and it went up and landed in somebody's house or something? I don't know. What Shot that booger way up there. We thought we were going to the moon right then. You know, Russia's got ahead of us. Shoot, we went out the first cow pass we find. Shoot a rocket off. Oh, Gerald, I don't know how he did it. He took a pipe and stuck something on the end of it, put some gunpowder in it. And shot that rascal up. I don't remember how high did they go, Gerald. About what? A mile. <laughs> well, it has been 25 years. <laughs> Drank coffee, ate dinner, drank coffee, 
low dose asthma, brought them back home. He said, I really don't want to go out there anymore and see if they're laying in the mud. Next morning went out, sure enough, they were all laying in the mud. Every one of them. Load them back up, carried them over to Joe's, unload them, drank coffee, ate dinner, drank coffee, load them back up, carried them back over to his house, turned them loose. He got to thinking, he said, man, I don't want to go out there in the morning and see if those sounds are laying in the mud. So he talked to his wife and said, would you go out there in the morning and see if those sounds are laying in the mud? She said, sure, no problem. Next morning she went out, checked them, you know, said, came back in, he said, huh. Said, were they laying in the mud? She said, huh. Said, the lip bombs on the trailer and other trying to get the cab of the truck <laughs> Now that's a long story to make a thing. But that's, that's learning by repetition. And I just wanted to, I just wanted our instructors over here to understand that we did learn by repetition. The only thing I can say about the future is that uh, probably more landmarks will disappear. Like I mentioned about Norman High School and, and probably Calhoun School. We used to call it the old white school, you know, went to grammar school down there. It's probably uh, eventually something will happen to it. It's getting in the age now that they'll have to decide whether to repair it or replace it. Well, of course, we will get more mature if we're not mature yet. I'm not sure exactly what being mature is, but. Uh, Anyway, we will get more mature as we get older. And oh, there is a rumor out that they have discovered what the wise men's occupation is. Now, this is something in the future, you know, that they're, they're going to determine this. Do you all know what the wise men, the three men, you know, that followed the stars or thing, what their occupation was? Fireman, that's right. Plus, James Harris. <laughs> you know why they're firemen? Because they come from a fall. <laughs> James Harris will not be invited to the <laughs> He's done that to me two or three times. <laughs> we, of course, will explore the stars and we will explore retirement. And it promises to be a new adventure for us. We will live longer and hopefully healthier. But let's not worry about the future. Let's enjoy this night renew old friendships, dance to the songs of the 50s and the 60s, and enjoy our memories. I did want to say one thing about R.M. I heard him ask one of the ladies, uh, ask one of the ladies, uh, what did I say? <laughs> oh, and he asked one of the ladies to call him a taxi. And she said, okay, you're a taxi. <laughs> Is that what your title is? No, you're here, right? No, no, you're not among those that's what you're talking about. Okay. All right, uh, Ann asked me to do this, and uh, or we discussed it anyhow. Uh, Bill is talking about how great things are. Everything was uh, going along fine for me as far as this thing's concerned. Until this morning we started toward registration, and uh, someone asked if I was on cortisone. Uh, I'm not on cortisone. I've got the same problem some of the rest of you have. And we won't call any names, I think. But then I go see Mr. McClinic over here, and he does this to me. He said, yeah, I recognize you right off. Puts a book in front of my hair. And Virginia Evans topped it off this afternoon. My daughter came down to the picnic to visit with us down there. And, and uh, I uh, introduced Virginia to Susan, and she promptly explained to Susan that uh, that she and I had had a date for the Eagle Ed dance and when we were in the senior high school. She wouldn't leave well enough alone. <laughs> she. Uh, went right along and told Susan it's the worst day she ever had in her life. <laughs> uh, that was 
the uh, primary part of my day. I am supposed to get this uh, letter to me so I can explain to you who else is going to be here. She told me this morning she about had it finished. And then at the picnic today, she said, I about got it finished. And just a few minutes ago, she evidently got it finished because I've got it. Uh, and Doyle Glennon told me at the picnic that he would meet me here at 3.30 to unload these speakers. Doyle got here about seven. <laughs> these speakers are about 100 pounds apiece. I had a volunteer to stay and help, but I thought it would depend on Doyle. Uh, tonight we're going. I'm going to tell you about some of the people that aren't here, why they're not here. Uh, I notice a gap here in the ones that aren't here, and we won't go into who's not here because of that. Uh, Miss Huey sends her regards. She didn't send them, knowing that I was going to do this. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Mr. Huey is quite ill for those of you that didn't know seriously and uh, he uh, evidently from emphysema and he's uh, she does send us her love mr willis is well aware of the fact that Miss Huey wasn't very fond of me uh, stanley and rosemary barnell fuller uh, that's quite a name if you want to add all that together but if you're going to mesa arizona uh, you've all got an invitation to come and visit with them. I encourage you to do it all at once. <laughs> but they do invite you to come. I think it would be quite a shock. <laughs> Terry Hogue, uh, it says of Scott Depot, West Virginia. Uh, I think the reason he's living in Scott Depot, Arizona, uh, West Virginia, is so that we won't come to visit with him. <laughs> we can't find him. But he's, uh, he said he'd be thinking of everyone here tonight. He's, uh, uh, let's see, what, he's preparing for the ministry. Uh, I think uh, his father was in the ministry, so Terry has decided to go into ministry. I, I have thought about changing him into a few different things myself. <laughs> ministry wasn't one of them. <laughs> uh, Nancy Cal Everts, is that, is that proper? Sorry about that. And she's a, she's a blue rock. And they're taking a, a vacation that they feel like evidently that they've earned for quite a while. Ann writes down here that uh, it means that her husband won out. I seriously doubt that. I don't think that's what that means. Bonnie Lear Chu. Bonnie Lear, most of you remember. She's in Seattle, Washington. Uh, evidently decided this was a little bit for an overnight trip. Uh, but her husband Jim is having major surgery Tuesday. And Bonnie called and said she missed all of us and would be thinking of all of us tonight and, and would like to ask for prayers for her husband during the surgery. Mayor Frances Mann, who was in Cross, most of you know, for several years, she had a bodybuilding clinic or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I guess she decided to take it to Indonesia. That's where she is now. <laughs> she wishes that she could come also. Byron Wojo, Howard Finley, excuse me, his name. Someone said, you said you saw Howard lately. Uh, says here that he's probably filling sandbags. Uh, I do know someone here has made it from Utah. Did I not? Yeah, back over here in the corner. So we have someone here from Utah, so they didn't need everyone to fill sandbags in Utah. But evidently, they needed some. He lives near Salt Lake City. Uh, he's issued a warm invitation for everyone to come and visit him. So it is, all of, if you can get all these trips arranged at the same time, you've got plenty of places to stay. <laughs> Byron Walser uh, is uh, in Modesto, California, and uh, he welcomes any visitors who would like to go that way. Uh, if you'll work early in the summer, you've got quite a trip planned. Myra Watson Mercer, as most of you know, is taking 13 teenage girls to Gloria this week. The only thing I could think would be worse would be boys. <laughs> but uh, it sounds like she's probably going to have a good time. William Willis is in labor negotiations. That's not labor. <laughs> negotiations. 
He tries, he tried hard, Ann says here, but he just couldn't make it. Earl Farrell is not here tonight due to the fact that Paraglen Young is here tonight. <laughs> Both of them can't leave Mississippi at the same time. Carol <laughs> won the bet, and he's here. I think Martha D. may also have had something to do with the bet. <laughs> Brenda Sibbles is in Williamsburg, Virginia, and she's on a long planned tour, says. And she sends her love and best wishes to all of you. I also am glad to see all of you myself. It's been very pleasant. There's what little bit of planning that I've been involved in. Uh, there's one group of people here tonight that have been mentioned in this roster that I think that we should, those of the class of 58, should give a very, very strong uh, appreciation to. And that's the spouses that come out and listen to all this crap. Thank you. <laughs>
misty eyes and lumpy throats. So let our remembrances be of their crazy stunts, their funny sayings, their unforgettable quirks that made them our dearly loved Solemn Griffin Miller, slow of speech, dry of wit. Wickedly funny did he do. Always good for one more outrageous prank. Brilliant John Hall Etheridge, multi-talented musician and deeply caring friend. Tall, gangling Pat McConnell with his shy grin. Quiet Merle Maxwell, gentle and reserved. And devilishly handsome Buck Yeatman, smooth spinner of lines, good athlete, great friend. We remember all of you at this reunion.
Yeah, I could probably handle traveling from California, but I'm not sure about that. You have the baby. Okay, the most children. Now, we've got three down here. Is that right? Now, you count it. This is, we've tabulated this and yeah. Punk and Wagner or whoever counts the balance and all that stuff and done it. Huh? No. And we're opening the envelope. Raymond Pitcher did what? His new truck. <laughs> oh, yeah, the old son of the new truck. Okay. We want we just want everybody to know Raymond has a new truck. We, we tried to get him to haul all the garbage off down there, but he wouldn't do it. Okay, both children. Don Brooks, Mary Pendergrass, and Gerald Wayne Johnson. How about that? <laughs>
she taught me too. She's had a hard time. See, she can't look at me. So she got her back. Oh, oh, you see, you still see the ruler, you friend there. It's still there. That wasn't nice, was it? Oh, no, don't tell. I don't need to tell them that. Boy, they, they won't believe that. I've been teaching Miss Hanks. <laughs> Boy, what do I get her up from the class in there? So, Paul Johnson. How about this?
one or two of the others in the book that I think will be in the Crossed area from the rest of our lives. So if you do change your address, would you just drop us a note and we'll be sure and keep it on file? Because we've lost one or two and we have no way of knowing where they are or how to get a hold of them. They have no kin here in our area. Thank you.